Hello, I'm Mabel Jong. Thanks for joining me. We're in the World Healthcare Congress interview studio, and I'm so pleased to welcome back my friend Doug Moeller with McKesson Health Solutions. Doug, great to see you. Thank you. It's nice to be back. Well, a lot's happened to you over the past year. It's been a busy year. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked in the past about some molecular diagnostic yes. testing, and we've had some excitement about that this year. Well, you just announced a big collaboration with the American Medical Association. Tell me about that. We did. Uh, our work with the uh, CPT project process uh, of the American Medical Association is uh, to, cre to create a junction between our Z identifiers that are unique test identifiers uh, with actual CPT charge codes. Okay, and how significant will that be going forward for this area, area of diagnostic We think testing? that there's an opportunity to completely change the way that laboratories uh, uh, can submit codes and health plans can track utilization of laboratory services so that they know exactly what's going on with patient care given this explosion of medical genome related testing. Okay, so if you exactly know what the testing is, will it be easier to determine a charge for that? And that could make a big difference. We think that some of the laboratory techniques are similar from test to test so that, that once we get set on how much work is involved in each test, the charge codes that CPT creates will actually be pretty effective across a range of tests, but we still need to know exactly what test was performed so that when we do analytics later on or uh, when we uh, are doing family profiling that we know which test was done uh, to, to make a diagnosis. How did you get to this point and why did it take uh, this well, long to get So let's back up a step because I think in emerging technology one of the first things, there's like three phases. The first is what is this test or device or procedure and, and how do we track that? Do we have a label for it? Do we have a, a code, a, like an identifier code? The second phase is uh, once we start to understand a little bit what is it, then we need to know who should have that t test or procedure and that requires a collection of data and a correlation with uh, clinical disease management that goes right out into the provider community of who's ordering the test and so forth. And then the third phase involves health plans and the laboratories that do this testing of what's the clinical utility or value of this test and a little bit more to the point, what's the price? Right. And so uh, laboratories are very interested in what will I be paid. Uh, health plans are very interested in how, how expensive will this be in, and, and how much of a difference does this test make in the treatment process. And so what is happening in this collaboration is that we are filling in a gap that existed in the past where CPT does a lot of work at, at level two of who should have this test, how good is the test, what's the clinical validity. We're taking that back a step and saying we need to know as soon as the test gets developed and created, what is it? and how can we track that through the research and development phase so that a clinical lab that is bringing a test to the market has a chance to get that to the market even faster. Right, and Dr. Moeller, how long, how, what did it take to really get to the stage where you were able to determine well, so McKesson is an infrastructure company and we've had some previous experience in pharmaceuticals with the national mm -hmm. drug codes of having one code per test, uh, for one code per drug. Mm -hmm. And so we had that background and we said, why wouldn't we do this for this explosion of tests that are coming out of the human genome pro uh, project and, and out of molecular diagnostic testing? Why don't we bring our infrastructure, our automation, to the data capture process and let people apply for a test online or a code, a code identifier online and then we'll work with the AMA to uh, validate the test and assign a charge code to it so that the opportunity to actually use this technology sooner than ever uh, is one of the steps forward. And with the AMA on board, does this have national uh, implications that could be rolled out pretty immediately. It does. Now we're working through exactly uh, when this will all start to uh, uh, take effect, uh, but the collaboration is the work is already starting in terms of some of the data capture and uh, the work that is already building on some of the recent uh, Tier 1, Tier 2, and, and additional uh, MAAA codes that CPT has already announced. 
we want to make that even more detailed so that as we do analytics and start tracking patients for specific tasks, that we know exactly what the outcomes will be. And what's the next step from here? The next step is to uh, get additional people involved. The, the process needs to be reasonably transparent, particularly at uh, the work effort level and at the pricing level so that uh, buyers and sellers, the health plans uh, and the laboratories know how to price the tests so that it's a, a fair price for the test and that we know when to use it mm -hmm. uh, and when it makes a difference. Okay, Dr. So, Muller, that's really exciting and I can tell you're very excited about it. Uh, it's, I think it's the, the, the next step in this explosion of genetic testing uh, that pretty soon we'll all have a copy of our own blueprint uh, and then we'll have to decide. We'll, have a, we'll talk about that next year. Absolutely, I look forward all to right, it. Thank, thank you. you. I'm Abel Chong. Thanks for watching.